themselves in this position. And you're right, there are so many parallels, and one of those being that both How do we do it? Okay, EG start on defense, Talon on start on attack. If I'm Talon, I am taking A every single round because they do not have the information to clear these. So once you create the question marks here, they're pretty much permanent. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on this. Let's see what they can pull out now against Talon. Now it's a battle in Did Talon, Talon must know though. Shots exchanged at least with the pistols and a fast play towards it. Garnet's up draft dash. No one clear in the corner. And Cornwell immediately capitalizes, but he is taken out. And it's a bit strained, isn't it? This fight is taking place, just trying to duck and weave and dodge. Keep an eye on the Omen. Omen might have Spikes really good timing quickly. for this. And that's off the back of Cruz finding another important lurk. Remember how good this guy was in the opening. Yeah, match the thing is, EG should know about the lurk a lot of the time, so they might not want to walk in there. And Cruz has just ushered the rest of his team in to get a plan Still pretty hard to win this post-plant. But it's now winnable. As Mosh has come back online, so that's going to be coming up. Got to hit some shots in. Cruz looks like he wants to try and take the fight to them. Still being watched for the angle, though, and anyone who yeah. win it ends up being EG. Down to that 2v4. The players really do. Fox needs to watch this angle. Couple okay, nicely done from EG. Nicely done from them. EG who will be taking the pistol round. Change the title. A couple of shots yeah. making the difference. Oh, I didn't do predictions either. Damn. I'll do it. I'll do predictions round. after I, this. I do want to put a serious highlight here onto Cruz. I wasn't even aware when we were casting their first game that he had started IGLing for the team. Because at every other event that we've seen, X10, okay. Sersha, Talent, whatever you want to call Child, them. I'll do prediction Boston. during this. So it's going to be Boston, during the eco. And Cruz has only just taken over recently. That game on Haven where he obliterated the server, he was IGLing for the first time. Chat, one minute on this. Now he's you got this round pretty much. To force up heading into the second. Okay, so what they're doing now needs to happen all the time. They just need to take A control all the time and then they can kind of fall back. They do buy into this round, so this is an important round. We have three people on the side for EG, so they should be okay for this one. Let's see what the util's like. Nice, okay. Good overwhelm over towards A. This is going to help them out a lot during this as well. I'm not sure this comp works for EG. I'm honestly not, but it must have been working in practice for them. How are they winning that? Damn, how on earth did they win that? Nice omen flash. But we four on two this? Okay, good flash. I mean, fantastic. He pushes off the paranoia. That isolates a 1v1. Swings Let's back watch around. This. And this player swinging default. Look, shooting Boostio in the Damn, back. Damn, yeah, Fox is going to got to kill her. So good between okay, the two insane them. start for EG. By BCJ there towards the end. Still, a little bit worried. That, that was a dangerous round. Highlighting a couple of important things, too, as we head into an eco for Talon. Gives us the opportunity to talk about it. You can see Ethan has really high stats. Okay, I'm not going to go through each one. But he's the best performing player at the tournament so far. Sheriffs go in. Good chance for EG really to build up a lot up of util. I don't think he's gonna be the oh my goodness. Sorry, a lot of uh, icon. Uh, okay, he gets an That's a one tap. But you remember in that previous round, he gets caught with utility in his hand yeah. and run down on the site. See, I literally, so all they need to do it, to they don't even need to create people. So like, they don't even need to put people here. They just need to stun and smoke KO. this every single round, he and then it's so pretty good. I think he's gonna struggle we'll see. I, I, I still need to keep an eye on EG and how they're going to kind of cover this up. Unless Ethan just surprises me and plays out of his mind. But he has played Breach before, and it often looks a little weaker of a pick for him. I assume, though, that he's just picking it because he's more comfortable than Com right now. Yeah. Seems that way. Uh, interesting play by Cruz, actually. Are they fine just to give them A every single round and they just play retake? It's definitely a way. It's definitely an approach. looking for. Indeed it does. So. EG now just setting up for a faster retake. Better weapons in their hands. Oh, that's nice. Oh my god, that's so nice, though. They look at the jet's feet when it's going in, and then the jet dashes into the smoke, then the flash blows up, so everyone's looking at the jet trying to hit the shot, then the jet dashes, and then where the jet was, the flash pops. That's really cool. Usually you'd expect a double flash or a sova with the breach. 
Damn, that's a nice retake. If they if they have these kind of retakes, then yeah, they can just leave A, and it doesn't matter about the information. Okay. It's a different approach, for sure. Okay, we're going to the first buy, and now they want to shut down over towards A. Important buy for Talon. I'm sure they've got more, but the strat book looks fairly deep for Evil Genius. Heavy prep time for EG, that's the name of their game. Talon going in this. Feels like okay, in they this beat the stun. Right now, just make sure to watch these common angles. Okay, that's they a good flat. Holy hell, okay. Early shutdown over towards A, and then we're just going to leave it as retake. Timing, Ooh, but we leave the jet here. Okay. The player's going to be evacuating, and they trust Jorgamo to be holding this line of sight angle towards A long. And this is an area where Foxy's going to have to commit the trailblazer. Yep, there it goes, just to clear this out. Okay, then they have to have two people here. And now we have to constantly hold two people here. So now the rest of this, so they should know that, and the rest of the site's weak. Ethan's gone for a full like the rest of B is now weak. Anticipating the rest of talent dropping off, but this knife does it going to carry on going with it? Does. Player to breach. It's a pretty big yeah, okay, this is good. This is very good from them. They're going to go over towards B. It is a 4v5, but they are doing the perfect thing. Let's see if they can win this. This heavy investment from Talon. They've already lost that one player, Sushi Boys, early on, but see if they can make the most of it. Flash into the back of draft play as well. On to it. Mustio. Press the wrong button there from the observer. Prius. Plant goes in, they flash. Four and four. Be going down without too many problems. There was an aftershock there, potentially a faster play. There was a flash up close once more. Now the rolling thunder. Oh Rips my goodness. Through that connector, but Talon still coming up on top when it comes to these kills. Okay, very nice from Talon. They now know that they killed the smoker, so they can go play after plant as well. To try and accompany it. Make sure that he can get into the front of this site, but he is left grasping, trying to spot where some of these players might be. And Talon are playing this. Particularly quite well now, just biding their time, okay. weaving in and out, making sure that there's not good sign for Talon. If they can win this 4v5, they can win majority of these rounds. So yeah, basically, why you have a so what you want to do loads of the time as well is you want to hold one person over towards A when you don't have like a dog or anyone or anything like this to get information and clear these it means that you constantly have to hold two. So it means that when you if you're Talon, you take pressure here and like you smoke here, you flash in front, and you get info. You know that they have to hold two people here, which normally means that B's weak, so I'm going to keep an eye on how many times they decide to do this, but very nice from them bringing that out early. The fact they win 4v5 is a good sign. Okay, it's fast. What's the Omen flash like on defense? And it's a quick play as well. There was a flash and a paranoia, and you can see the fault line on top of it. All the usual utility being used to try and push their oh way goodness. through, and I think that was again spam through the The ult goes out. It's very fast. The they don't have the smoker anymore, so they can just play over towards long. So it's kind of fine. It's going to be a weird round. I mean, a lot of jewels coming in here. Who wins the jewels out? Nice swings. Ah, oh, he smoked down. Okay, very nice. The fact that um, BCJ went down was pretty much everything there. BCJ survives, they use the ult, they smoke here, and then uh, it's just a spam fest to defuse. So this is nice from uh, Talon. Bit unlucky the BCJ went down. I think maybe he could have played a bit more passive. But they're good on Talon for just spamming the uh, smoke when they decided to go in. Okay, so Talon managed to win two in a row. That forced them down to eco. Stun goes out. Smoke is here as well. Never seen that. I've never seen that. And Sushi Boys is all over it. Yeah. All over it. That was pretty cool idea. Nice shutdown. It definitely does. It definitely does. But I still think it's incredible that he was ready for the updraft play. Ready for the reaction as well. They see, see Killjoy, so that's actually a good amount of information. Normally when there's a Killjoy, there's only one person over towards A, so let's see if they decide to go back A. We haven't seen them play on Haven yet, but... 
just from how they played Pearl and Ascent. Yeah. You know that they've got some set strats for eco rounds and the like. That feels oh. like a bit of the stylistic differences between. Actually, putting them down to 31 HP. Damn the call from uh, chat. Who calls for Easy. Talon again? Like you were saying, Josh, you know, very focused on set strategies. Is it Cruz or? As well it is Cruz. It's very impressive rounds. so far. Though, this round isn't done though. They pick up a gun. We kind of snowball in terms of, well, they have no map control. This was very good from um, Cruz getting heaven control though. Do we have a flash for this? Yes, we do. Nice shot from Bustio. Cruz has to peek from heaven, but now they know he's heaven. Ooh, this, this is so doable. Never flash through the box. It is dodged. Smokes are starting to fall now. BCJ swinging wide with the stinger. Bit of running gun at play. Damn, okay. They managed to win this as well. BG. That kill here was and pretty much everything. Good run from Boostio. Really nice post plants. That one uh, I think it was Boostio that got it. Too easily. Yeah. There was no good. There was no good weaponry available to EG until they got that one pick. Yeah, they did great though pushing middle after this. I thought Talon's uh, calling was not too bad. It's just the fact that this kill came in. Wow. There is no world. No, there is no world. He hit that. That's how he got the kill. That is disgusting. There's I mean, that's just no honestly, way. that is just a land moment. You can only do that on land. You can only do that on land. That's, that's like crazy. Wow. That's the shot of the tournament so far. Talon has still been able to scrap Dude, that right. literally... Guardian that's how they won the round, that's mad. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he got away with that one. Ethan insta-ults. Gap in the smoke. Doing more really damage is going to hit, right? We have to see a swing out. And they just fall. Before we take faster garage. Yeah, that smoke kind of let them down in terms of garage there. Really like That's a worrying sign as well. Nice retake though in terms of EG and in terms of garage. Like garage retake was really cool. Good all. Ethan did like Ethan did a lot of work there. I know Yorgamo got three kills, but um. Sorry, Jogoma. Got three kills. That's the Yampi coming out in here. Yeah, definitely a worrying sign in terms of that smoke missing. And. I mean, yeah. Iron out any sort of missteps. Definitely, where we've seen BCJ maybe getting caught out here or there, but this is Talon taking a timeout. And Cruz did get away with murder last time he played this map on Haven. A lot of his lurks really. Ethan has looked very good. Catching those times, like but I think pure flex as well in terms of what he's playing. Setups, not going to be letting as much get through. No, I don't think so, and, and especially because EG are going to be more comfortable leaving A open for retake. And it's much more difficult to get a dangerous lurk into A. You can get a Good lurk time for the timeout again. Plant, I'm pretty sure they can literally just create the question mark over towards A and just hit B. To be honest, for just the rest of the game, I would be fine with it. But we'll see. They have a lot of alts into this round. Any kind of walk through on B. Anybody trying to get through top garage. And normally he's got the alarm bot in garage as well. Although this time changing his setup slightly. Waiting for the knife. This is nice. First time we have this on. Okay, so now smoke goes down, so there's a question mark here and here. They can literally just smoke this, flash this, and that's it every single time. But it's okay. So we leave the Killjoy over towards A. I mean, EG are definitely approaching it kind of interesting with their comp. It's a slow start to the round for them. Just contacting up. Risky play, but they don't want to give they're so fine to have no info here, yeah. and I guess they are like very confident in their retake without the kill joke. Oh. 
Everybody up, never really going to be too ideal, but as a paranoia now, the Rolling Thunder actually off the There's back of that. There's no way they put the ult into this. Oh my god, they win this. Catching through, and it's up to BCJ. From the heaven position, does have the rifle. Needs to oh the my fight, god, they win this. 3v4. I was a little bit so questioning. I was questioning it so when they put the breach all into it. They put the breach all as they're jumping in, as they're exiting. It's perfect timing. Managed to get the kills, and the gun that was picked up over towards short was just everything. Since then, woke up. His fracture performance was huge. His breach play now. Damn, this was. Farming the rolling thunder and using it. Ah, that'd be a miss shot. In this round. Separating that Damn. retake and allowing Foxy to pick people off at will. Yeah, I can't believe they put the breach show into it. Three v four with low buy. That, that setup from Bustio though, not. They're like two sheriffs. Bustio has gone back over to a different C setup now. Okay, they stun. We beat the smoke. Still two people here. Nice reaction. BCJ has a judge. Oh boy. He decides to go. This could work well. What's the timing like? Oh, that was a nice stun. I mean, just just spamming the common angle, I suppose. Straight bullet lands onto the cranium of BCJ, but that plan down now. These post plans. We'll see what Talon can do in it. It's fantastic ultimates for Talon. Nice from them as well. They realize that the smoke is dead again, so they can just play after plant. Hill comes out as well. A lot of low HP is, so the hill is actually is super important. They do have op, they do have double smoke, so there's still window into this one. One way smoke, obviously, and there you go. What? Chipboy goes straight into this one. The aftershock, I think maybe Chipboy is just playing close into the cover. And now an attempt is made, sticking to the defense. The flank timing by They actually owned it. Jet still had double smoke, hit an important shot. Yeah, a little bit brutal for Tala in some of these rounds. That was nicely done from EG, though, but. I definitely think Talon could have won that round. I'm also really surprised that Sushi Boys doesn't try to commit an ult to it. He went for a reflank garage and he was way too late. Oh, okay. Understood why he. So he swung because the breach had to swing because breach was in damage. So actually, the retake was very, very nice here. That is hyped up, EG. Like they played this well. Breach damage here. Breach had to swing, and then to help out to try and trade at the jet swung, so they both lost both. Oh, they lost both the jaws. Yeah, it's a very good retake. Okay, how do you want to play this one? Keep an eye on these two flanking. Oh, this is a weird round. And they put the all into this kill, just going to get wrecked in the back, right? Oh my god, what a weird round. Nah, they kind of had to because they were in the ult. It, it was honestly, Bustio's defensive killjoy ult was just so huge here because they had just no map control. Yeah, really nice. Bustio, really good ult in defense. That was, a, that was a very good reaction from EG. But Talon just are not abusing the fact that they can't get information over towards A. Very noisy in the way that they take C. They need to. BCJ's positioning is kind of forced. Yeah, a bit of a missed opportunity in some of these rounds. This ult here was so good. Not sure what they're hoping for there, just running into their own smoke. No, they have they have to because the ult's down here. They have to make a play. It was so good from Bustio. They're not using anything over towards A. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Back up there with a paranoia. <laughs> what is going on? Just they're crazy. Now they're playing off site and they still have a smoker. BC needs to not overheat and just make sure he smokes the spike. He has done it. I think that's his usual. By the way, into the side to try and take that space. It's all over the place. Right now, swinging through with a dash. Knives ready. There's some backup once more. Players taking quite a bit of damage at all. Just down to Fox. Reflank as well. BCJ finds the kill. So. Safe hands once more, and so EG coming up to 
Quite a commanding lead so far, and one more round to potentially get that 9-3. Extremely puggy game, though. Yeah. I mean, it's extremely like puggy. Chaotic, happening down C long. But it's also like... Really Talon, I beg you look at their comp and create question marks over towards A. Like, please. And a rolling thunder being invested there as well speaks to how much EG are putting respect on Talon. And, uh, Making no early A pressure against this comp is like borderline criminal. Here when it comes to the alt economy, big rounds, to, uh, big ults to get onto the site, big ults to be able to convert. And EG are committing four players to an A lobby control play. Even if it's just an omen smoke that goes here. So they could have on through. They get a little bit lucky on this round. EG must be thinking, why on earth are they never going A? They put four, they put three people in an Omen Flash ready just for them to go A because that is what they should be doing. EG must just be going, what on earth is happening? Why are they never going A against us? Why are they never taking early A control? That's why they're playing so close, that's why they keep flanking, because they're like, we have to shut this down with people. So early! It's so far away, isn't it? Incredibly early. Maybe anticipating that they might be trying to use the alts to try and retake with, but okay. EG, they do take good fights. Eventually, Ethan helping out. Ethan so ready for. Oh, that's so unlucky. I jinxed him. That's my bad. I take the cast. He gets uh, as he pulled his neutral out. They're playing after plants long. Oh my god. BCJ managed to get the hero smoke on the spike. No one playing on site, more playing after plant. Holy hell. What an absurdly strange half. But while the timeline is up, take a look at those retakes. Talon did a great job getting the plant down every time, but my god, they could not hold on to it. EG's success in these retakes has just been. Yeah, Talon are doing like MIBR cosplay. What's going on here? EG looking pretty good. Sometimes you listen on the big stage, things like that can happen, but that's going to do it for the first half of Haven. Let's send it down to the desk to find out more. Thank you very much, Bren and SciShow. Now, we haven't seen EG's Haven just yet, Mitch. What did you make of that first half? Look, uh, it was pretty hard to point out any flaws in that. Even coming in up against that second round force fight, and they looked Their incredible. retakes were good, though. Really like, I loved EG's plan going into it. Like, honestly, they they knew the we they, it feels like they know the weaknesses of the comp. They have good, like, um, they have good retakes, first of all. Like, so, and they know that they can just leave over towards A, so they don't care about the information. And then when they're doing it as well, they'll just go very heavy. So they have, like, two ways of playing it, really. Like, they either just leave full retake or they play a bit heavy instead of getting information to try and have one person here. Kind of just scrapping that idea. And they're actually using their comp, like, insanely well. I was more just disappointed that Talon could have done a lot better. But in terms of EG stuff, they look great. And then even further into the game, they were just individually popping off when the teamwork faded. Uh, these guys, we talked about oh them boys God. before. What? Well, Bustio the and BCJ, hell? them B-boys, are here wow. to play. And they really have been drawing my eye throughout this entire first half. Just looking unreal and, well, they got the moves as we saw. Yeah. Sure. Uh, all right. I'm still kind of reeling from that one. You have been. You were I telling us that there was a bit. graphic coming up. We didn't know what it was going to be, but that was definitely not what I had anticipated. You probably thought there'd be stats on it or something. All right. Look, for Talon, they need to find their protocols. They need to be able to follow the script. We saw them be able to rally back after the coach called the timeout, but then things slipped out of their hands once more. They need to be able to course correct. They cannot just rely on the coach's timeout to make it happen. Well, it's not. Wouldn't be the first night three curse we have seen. Uh, back to you, Brennan Saito, to take us through the second half. All right, let's see what they got on defense. So, in terms of if you're Talon playing against EG's comp, incredibly important to show A pressure very early on. If you can then hold this for one and you have an op out on the jet over towards here, it's very hard to put the uh, kind of, it's very hard to just retake. Skadoodle, this area becomes very, very strong. Right, holding an op here, it's very hard to clear it in terms of this comp. So, Talon can do this. But I feel like EG are uh, probably just going to kind of rank everywhere, just take some map control and then just hit science. Just pure overwhelm. Yep. It really is. <laughs> the shots can be found, eventually resetting the aim a little bit there, so 
Going for that two big, for two play. Big flank, big yeah, flank. Big flank. Big flank. He's real fast. Damn. How, is boys getting away with that? How did he get again, that kill? And again, still in short. How did the he get these kills? Swing, still finding his mark. The player is weak enough for it. An impressive pistol. And just okay. trying to contest through the smokes. Talon taking that Maybe it's a little bit more obvious what they need to do on defense. That's important for them because an op is very important over towards Garnet. So let's see. EG as well. Go for a... Okay, chat. If EG don't win this force and Talon have a chance to get their econ good, which means they can get ops out, there's a good chance for them to do this. So if at any point Talon realize EG are full A hitting... They're going to get wrapped. Oh, what a talent going for here. EG with the force buy. Yeah, Big EG fight in mid, perhaps. Now Farmer and the Stingers. It's an interesting buy. Oh, my goodness. Down quite low. Talent taking that re-swing. You can hear the footsteps. Vox does get the one right behind. That's good. With the stun as well, just to try and at least help relieve that pressure that's coming out onto the site. But a pop it's craziness. Play. It's craziness. Their way through. Carnes as well, though. He can use the oh my god, no. <laughs> okay, nice cleanup from Talon. Two Talon people survive, but they do win the important round. So that's kind of all that matters that here. There's a chance for them to like get a lot of econ. Really a what can give Low buy coming in, Stinger Mania again. And again, EG kind of do have to just commit a lot of the time when they do it. That's it's very, very hard true. for them to clear back map but I control. I think that force buying in this meta is still really valid. And especially, is force buying should be better against teams that are good on a bonus. And I think Talon are the kind of team that... Are we... I mean, this could be enough to get the op so as well. So maybe they have enough money to buy the op into these though. rounds. Let's see what happens. We do... What okay, doing really trying here. to make sure that they win this. Makes sense. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Boost your one HP. Literally one HP here. But I feel like if they don't see any contact in mid... Cruz and Jipo just look so antsy, like they want to push. It's it's so pretty good as well because it feels like they've worked out their default as well. It's very hard for this team to get mid control on the on the attack, so they try and use the turret in terms of like are they pushing down mid, and they just instantly just spam. So they've already kind of found a way to punish at least one of the defaults that EG have. One person holding over towards A. This is craziness. It's, it's you do not need to do that. Uh, it's important to realize that EG's composition doesn't have a great tool to retake a lobby at this kind of time in the round. <laughs> they don't have a drone from the Sova, no dog from the Slash sky. goes in, doesn't hit anyone. If they can set the jet up to here, they should have a good rotate. Yeah, they set the jet up so we can get this stacked a little bit heavier. Keep an eye on the sky. This is what I was saying. Skadoodle is really really important and that's what i call skadoodle where the garnet is right now it's so good it's gonna be so good against this comp every single round this should be priority to try and get the jet here love that they bring it out early much better understanding on their attack uh, sorry on their defense than their attack nice plant from eg so an extra bit of money but all five people survive so they can have a full bonus if they want to Hey, this is good. Why Skadoodle? No joke. Skadoodle will literally play it every single time. <laughs> like, Skadoodle would always be here. You know when he played it at the beginning of when this game came out? Every single time he was here. No joke. I'm intrigued to see how he will be. How Boostio kind of works a lobby for EG. Because unless you take it right at the beginning of the round, I really feel like this comp is going to struggle to get it back. Later. Yeah, he was in the team with Brax. Um, I can't actually remember what org they were in at the time. Someone will know. T1? Was it T1? Yeah, there we go. Four Oh my god. Oh! Oh my god, it's crazy. Holy hell. It's pure pandemonium, but somehow that was madness. <laughs> Getting the uh, Robert, thank you, you so much. Down, Appreciate it. With the prime. I was all over the place. Yeah. Two months in the slug club. Thank you so much. Damn, that one was um I mean yeah, they put the all into it for sure. <laughs> Boys, my second guess himself trying to fight this one, but he does have that, a lot of money in the bank. I think it's worth just trying to fight this one to take weapons out of the hands of EG. Yeah, I would agree with that. There's not a large chance of him doing too much, but 
even knocking the armor off Boostio or something is actually Yeah, important. anything's good here. Any bit of damage because their econ's pretty low. The economy under check. Won't find too much though, and a stun to slow them down. Making sure that they can retreat out of there. So EG Not a chance. Down, and now that's gonna right? Find them on their 10th round here. Oi, Ooh, got out with a gun? Okay. Yeah, the, the clash in a lobby is massive. Right, so to me like we have to get the op out. We have to, to put it over to. Oh my the god, the op's going over towards C. Got good, value over on the could work a well. Side of things, I mean, if they early hit sure, C, sure. Yeah, the, I just thought exactly. we would be well, trying to set up in this position, this position, but we'll see. I mean, EG might expect that. They might be a step ahead. Oh my god, it feels like they're a step ahead because they know they're going to get the op out, so they don't even want to go A, so they're going fast C. So again, it's very good from EG, understanding what their comp's not good at, so we're going to go fast. Because there's probably three people trying to set it up, but Talon may be a step ahead in terms of this one. I was, that's, I'm very impressed with this. That angle off Karnitz. It's a life for now, but eventually falls. There is going to be that trade. Damn, okay. Just into the corner of the wow, side, no one that's it. impressive. Cruises that is impressive. Again, nice call from EG. They see the money and they go, they literally think what I'm thinking, right? You're going to set the jet up. That's what's good against this comp. We're, we're so bad at taking back information over towards A. You know that setting the jet up in these positions are, thing, are like really important. So what they do is they could decide to go between three people, helping them set up over towards here. So C is going to be weak, so we can do this very early on. Talon literally reads that that's what they're going to do in terms of a fast C and stacks three people over towards C. That's impressive. There's still danger in this too. Round 18, it's going to be a force from EG. Pokemon with the knives, Bustio only with Stinger. Oh my goodness. Well. <laughs> well. Yeah. And they're expecting the jet to be holding it and say, how on earth do you try and re-approach this? Okay, you do the smoke that I wanted to see Talon do to create a question mark here and here. That at least gives you some control, but you're still very scared. EG could be crossing short or long. And forces out the trailblazer. I think they're going to have a decent idea that there could be people trying to get into The thing is, when they start doing this, you know that there has to be people behind it. just trying to hold down to one angle. Nice shot. Right as the dash was fading. That was the person that was low HP though, so... Nice shot again. Wow. Just on that left hand approach, taken out. Garner's managed to updraft as well. Oh, wow. My God, rattling shot after shot. Absolutely destructive round from Garner. BCJ does claim two though. BCJ in the of the doing some damage. He'd have to be on for the Their money's though, really low, so they do want to try kill BCJ. Task ahead of him. And there's not much time to work with at all. Being surrounded now by the talent players. There is an op heaven that they could get, which is pretty important, position. but they're not gonna be able to get it. Right? Awesome Omen can't TP heaven to get this. But I don't think that no, EG okay. are doing a great job of pushing him out of position there. They need to get another op, but they can't push this the thing. See else. see what um so what Sideshow is talking about now in terms of pushing him out of position, it's so hard to push the op out of position when they have this comp. Like, how, how do you push him out? You're meant to just breach stun him when you know where he is? Oh, KJ got the op? Oh, okay, nice. I missed this. Straight back into this game. the scoreline, they're favored in the next one because EG had dropped down to a bad buy. Oh, okay, okay. once more, you see them kind of itching for a fight. Hey, that's nice from them. Good amount of money into this. Okay, Eco. The money does allow EG to... Best into a couple of stingers and, and cruise. Area. You do not want Cruz to donate a rifle. Good Whoa, that's fast. Boys, and he's been punished. Wow, that's, that's a, a nice overwhelm. Really nice from them. From they get a gun upgrade. They do have the killjoy oh, if they want to put the killjoy into this. Well. this Does Cruz expect someone to be this close? Could be everything this one. Yeah. If Bustio beats Cruz, grabs the Phantom. Oh, what a shot. Oh, this was going for a really fast play. Oh, no. The shot's whiffing, but eventually coming up with. Oh my! <laughs> what the hell? Right this is the round that they win. Okay, a lot of this was on um, Jogamo. They're going really menace, aggro over towards short. It was nice. Already isolating these fights, finding two of the players, but last flash being used now. Time ticking down. One away from the alt spot line, almost online for him. Or not quite going down just yet. And didn't okay, that's probably the last time we see Killjoy solo hold A. Not sure that's what you want to be doing. 
on this one, but I understand it because did they have? They didn't even have Killjoy. Oh, this is a weird one. Okay, so that's gonna be the last time we see Killjoy holding A. It was very nice from EG though to explode over towards this. Smarter with the way that he played that too, anticipating somebody to be watching for the flag. He ran into the alarm bot, Brett. I mean, Cruz ran into the alarm bot and then didn't pay any attention to where Bustio would be. Insta pick. Insta pick. Holy hell, okay. No slowing down, is there? It was like round after round, and that was BCJ being into spawn. Oh He's my god. Shorty up close has to reload that one, Garnet. He's breaking ankles out here, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's what no way. <laughs> That's amazing. incredible. Oh my god. Wow, everything in that round from BCJ teleporting into spawn. Yeah, after the, timeout. The double shorty kill from Garnet. It's a great opener. Garnet's clearly very talented with the off. But so many of these Holy hell. getting silly with it, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. The Literally, it's like, what the is going way. on there? This must be a wild match to play. Okay, good time for a pause. Dude, I think they just, I think they have to just rank play A. No joke, just take map control, just hit the site. The more experienced players. A lot of these they might go fast C right again. Now. That could definitely I've work without the split. Like this, playing to get deep into a tournament or going straight home. You kind of just have and to play ranked with this comp. You can't take back map control. I'm not gonna lie. You're seeing EG taking this time out. I wouldn't be surprised right now if the comms are very much, guys, slow this one down. You can see Potter is popping off right now because it feels like EG, they lose a player, but they don't cancel the hit. They just want to go fast off of it and they want to... You know, try and make up for some of the mistakes prior, but a little bit too. Uh, okay, let's see like what they can do. In terms of the play so far from EG, not willing to slow down that pace. Low money. And I think that that would be really it's gonna be a four by for them. We do have one ult to play around with. If yeah. you give them, if you give them the space, they're gonna make enough mistakes for you to capitalize. Okay, this should at least help them. So we're gonna turret here as well. This should at least help them. Take some map control back if they want to. So good for the if they don't year. lose anything. The knife hits two of them. They should know that's over. Well, I mean, they literally know it's over towards short, so they should be pretty scared in terms of this one. Dog goes out as well, so that's literally three of them. They know that three people are here now. Okay, we're four. Yeah, we're, we're even sending with three. That's the early omen flash out. That's pretty good. Four, Four people. Yeah, this is a massive over rotation, isn't it? Chad, I think they know that they have Boostio's to rank, but honestly, the at the moment, oh, Bustio's done good at kind of making sure that they haven't got any map control, so it's not too bad. And to be honest, BCJ hasn't really been that active on the lurk roll, so I don't think they're too worried about. But yeah, they they know that they can't go I'm back and take any map control. Four people here. This is going to be okay, no pretty. This could be pretty rough. We have no omen. That's very open, but we've got a double angle with it, so. Oh my goodness! And still the fight continues. Not willing to give them an inch, still EG, both players cutting across the angle with a TP from BCJ, but again, it's going to require a miracle. 25 seconds remaining. No more TP available to him. Still just about narrowly escapes that one angle. Oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Peak. Does he spot it up close? He does. The discipline from them and backing away. Time running low. They fall back. Ball Time's super low. Rifle. BCJ does have enough to spend into the next one. Well, they can't win it. Aim to do some damage, but I feel like you should just be saving in that scenario. <laughs> Yeah, the money's gonna definitely again, be getting tight I think Talon, uh, ta again, Talon had a pretty Talon's bad understanding of what EG's comp Gorgeous. did Maybe on defense or what it struggled to do on, on defense. But in terms slow. of understanding they how they have EG to play this comp on attack, they are all Potter over said, them. They absolutely slowed the pace. But the big problem is they never created a threat elsewhere on the map. No, there was never but they can't a create a threat a anywhere else on the map, really. How are you meant to get into Garage? Actually, Unless you're using one of the flashes. And then you don't want to let the ops set up over towards A. It's a nightmare. So 
Talon not getting punished for that over rotation. Big 1v1 duel here. No smoker? You now have no smoke, so you're going to have to take a risk. What are you going to do? Just dry walk into garage? It's going to work. That's all the info. They know exactly where these players are. They've got to be garage and B. Yeah, it's going to make it really, really difficult. In fact, all the space was taken up by Talon. They're holding this long angle. Jorgamo. Oh, he was watching it. The updraft play. Still his main needs come, his main needs come in the swing. Being used forwards, and needs to be a bit more behind this one, but Cruz just leaving it. And they're all over them. Ethan a on a one on four. They need something like this. Holy place. hell. Again, Ethan just trying to make a risky play. <laughs> <laughs> chat. I don't know, chat. I'm totally so worried. It's, really. Again, fundamentally, the comp doesn't work. Just... You're crazy playing Haven without a Sova, a Sky, or a Fade. It's an absolute nightmare. Even with Talon struggling on the attack side, they're still finding it hard. They have to eco now, right? I actually feel that the, the way we're getting to this spot is very different. Talon were having big executes to get in on the side, but then failing the post plans. For EG, they're having difficulty even getting onto the plant. They're losing players two, sometimes three, before they even get the plant down. In that situation, they don't control C long. It's awkward for EG from the beginning of the round to the end. At least Talon were getting the They're end. just doing what they did to Heretics. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like they saw the... It's like when they played against Heretics and they're like, damn, Heretics are crazy for not playing uh, Information Gatherer on, on Pearl. <laughs> let's, let's do it on Haven. Yeah, crazy. You lot are crazy. Trying to play the game on hard mode? I mean, I respect it. Maybe practice have been too easy, so you got to play it on hard mode. But. But that on the fly calling, the mid rounding, the overall IGL and coming out from Bustio. Chat, no like joke. They need to time. play ranked over towards A. Just send it. The, the Just send it with everyone. All five of them. And this is getting close. EG maybe even considering going for some kind of force, but I think the best option here They still is have Killjoy on. Oh, they are going for it. Yeah, they're going for it. I mean, what are we doing? We've got to go as five, pretty much. Or they could do the same thing that they did earlier where the Killjoy holds all the information and then they could rotate back. Like, that would work. Garnet has the op. We have a Bucky. Uh, why, do, why do I feel like this is the round? Look at the buy. This could be the round that they win. We get the op set up, going to go over towards Skadoodle, like I said. And that means you can just heavy stack over towards the other side, so you can have two and two in... Oh boy, nice omen flash. There's four people here. This is just looking all over the place. Oh Dude, my Rachel goodness. Rachel goes out as well. This is crazy. Chat, you know me. I don't bash comps very easily. Like I'm not I'm not one of those people that go, will heavily go in on the comp. I called this out so early. This is madness. Looks his way across, flash over the top, and he just can't quite catch the angle. Okay. 12 rounds for Talon. What a comeback. Unbelievable scene. One last chance. And they are in a, a, a position of being enormous favorites in the final round. They, they know exactly where EG are going. Yeah. EG's game plan there was to create some level of diversion in Garage and try and get a free plant down for Jorgamo. He gets his knives online, dashes away. You know, you can see the play, but... Here we go, we got a ranked, you got a ranked. Here we go, they're going to do it. They might win this. They have to five pass and just hit A. It's the only thing you can do. You have to five pass and, in, like, decisive hit instantly. He's got such a great read on EG. Oh, the op might get a setup. Okay. at least Oh! Carrying the previous one into the round, there was a flash to try and push him back off that angle, but he still has that dash. Yeah. Nice seeing it enabled, a bit of a panic jump potentially. I don't think he intended to do that one. And while uh -oh. all this is happening, EG have managed to take First time he missed. Up. They don't have the best setups at the moment, so looking good for EG. You have to rank in this. This is it. They take the map control, just ranked force into the site. Still not done, but again, this is how you have to play it. Oh boy. He's back in. He's, He's going to be in the. Oh, he gets another kill. 
He gets another kill. He's in the alt, but he's done enough. Turns into a two on two. In terms of, there is no alt uh, spike down yet. We do have the killjoy alt for this one. It is a good plant, so they can go play in the corner of it towards long. Holy hell, this is craziness. If Ethan gets a kill, Ethan gets uh, ult. Oh. Oh. He gets out just in time. Backs away, but this post plant needs to be perfect, and he's just trying to get on the line. It's all down to Ethan. The stun. It rocks the line. A side angle still half under the fuse. And tries Holy to hell. I mean. First of all, very, very nice comeback. Like, very nice comeback. But holy hell, I have not seen a comp that bad for a long time. The, Chad, the last time I saw a comp this bad was my no smokes comp. You can't, you can't play Haven without a Sova, a Fader, a Sky. It's mad.